Hi, I'm Andrew Collier, here in the training room at International Gas Detectors, here today to talk to you about our 635 series controllers, how easy this is to wire up, how easy this is to operate and have an operational gas detection system within a few minutes of having installed the system. So we're just going to pop the lid on this and show you the internals and how to wire. Okay, so we're just going to pop these four lid screws. Uh, thing to note about this, uh, the display on the front panel connects with a cable connector. We'll show you that in a moment. There's a little locking latch to do that, so just be careful removing the cover. Okay, so we've popped the four lid screws, so we've taken the cover off now, and we've got a cable connector. So there's a little note on here on the sticker, just says release the locking ramp, pull back, and that connector will pop off. So now we can see the internals. Four relays down the side, each one of the relays has its own address, so when we get to the setup video to show you about uh, how to set up the control panel, how to change the cause and effect, we'll talk about that. This unit is a TOC 635 Plus. Uh, there's also a TOC 635 Micro. Now the difference between the Plus and the Micro, Micro only has two of these relays, it doesn't have the Modbus connection ports, uh, it doesn't have a directly connected beacon sounder, so it's a, it's a cut down version of this board. So it has less features, but of course it's cheaper. So, each relay has its own address here. Uh, we've got two Modbus ports in and out, so we've got Modbus connection. We've got a directly connected beacon sounder port here. This will go off on any alarm, but you do have control of it within the operating software. Two digital inputs here, so you can use these for slam switches, you can use these for connection to uh, another fire system. Uh, this is then our highway port. Power coming off the power supply. Battery backup, so if you connect uh, one of our battery backup modules to this port, uh, you can have an external battery backup for that. Um, looking around then the connections, on the power supply I've got live and neutral. Those are your two power connections on the panel, up at the top. That's your earth point connection, so we include with part of the system uh, an earth filter. So a lot of the time uh, when it's installing systems on site, particularly if it's an industrial location, uh, the earth connections on sites can be electrically noisy. Uh, we include uh, an earth filter here to get rid of that noise off the ground connection. So this is where you're making the earth connection, not onto the power supply. This is your earth connection. Panel has to be earthed uh, to make sure we get rid of any electrical noise and rubbish on the cable screens for when we're connecting up here. Now this particular panel, this, this is our two wire connection now going off to the detectors connected to the system. So this one's wired in CY style cable. Uh, we've, got a, we've taken the braid off down to the cable screens. So these are uh, Wago style spring terminals. Strip, strip back the outer cable. Uh, get, put the braid in some, some sleeving so it doesn't shorten anything. Connect the braid directly into one of these uh, earthing terminals. So the earthing terminals here are for the cable screens. Here, here we're using it for um, the sensors. If you're connecting anything else here, like the Modbus port for instance, then also that will want to be screened and this, this is your terminal rail for your cable screens. doesn't matter which way round we terminate this cable. The two-wire communication and power system doesn't care about that. So as soon as you strip that, pop them in, plug in, that's ready to roll at this end of it. So if we're not connecting anything else up, that's all you would need to connect. Uh, if you're going to use these relays, first one is dedicated to fault, so any system fault this will activate. Second one is any alarm level one. Uh, now these, you don't get control over these because we want you always to have at least a fault relay and at least an alarm level one for everything that's connected to the system. After that for these relay connections you can do anything you want with these. These can be any alarm level, could be another fault, uh, could be anything that you want to make it to be on the system. Um, you've also got relays available on each of the sensors, so we'll have a look at wiring a sensor in a moment. Um, You've got digital outputs to be able to control beacon sounders. Uh, so the idea with the two-wire system is that you, you're not dragging everything back to the control panel to connect it. We're minimising the wiring here. This gives you power and communication off to a detector. And on each detector then, you've got outputs to be able to control beacon sounders, solenoid valves, interfaces to other systems. You can read other things in as 4 to 20 milliamp signals. So if you've got a, a temperature probe or a pressure sensor, you could read that in on a sensor, and we'll show you that in a minute uh, with the connections that we're now going to make off on the actual gas detectors themselves. 
Okay, so this is one of our two-wire safe area gas detectors. Uh, these come in ATEX form as well. Printed circuit board inside is exactly the same. We don't differentiate in terms of the electronics or the quality of the analysis that's going on here between safe area and ATEX. Um, so we're just going to pop the lid on this and we'll have a look at how we're connecting up inside. Okay, so we're popping the lid off now. Uh, we're just unplugging the sensor and then we can see internal connections onto the printed circuit board. Okay, so here we are with the lid off. So again, here's our CY connection. And again, uh, each detector will be provided with an earth block like this so that you can connect up the cable screens. So again, we've, we've stripped, stripped the cable back. Uh, that's then your these plug on. Again, making this connection doesn't matter which way around we put these two cables. So the L1, L2 plug on. I've got the same connection then going out to my next detector, L1, L2. Doesn't matter which way again that goes. You can cross this cable over all the way down this, this, when we're making connection to the two wire detectors. Doesn't matter which way around I do that. So this one's just a detector. You'll see on the next one that we have a look at, uh, we've got some other things wired up to it. But each one of these detector baseboards has a relay. And we can access the relay in the setup to control solenoid load valves and to control all sorts of other external devices. I've also got two multifunction ports here. These can be set to be inputs or outputs. So we can set these to be SSR outputs to control, say, a beacon sounder to directly drive that at 24 volts. Uh, I could also set one of these or both of these to be analog inputs as a 4 to 20 milliamp device. And with those, we could then control a loop-powered pressure transducer or an airflow switch, any, anything like that, or a digital input off a slam switch um, to be able to directly interface to the detector. So this gives you the capability now to, to distribute the control for the system. So I don't have to wire all the way back to the control panel to get a beacon sound output, or all the way back to the control panel to control the solenoid valve. I can wire directly to the nearest detector and control those devices from there by changing the cause and effect on the panel. So it minimises the absolute bare minimum the amount of cabling that we need to install for a system to fully operate. Okay, so we've lifted the lid on our second detector here, and again you can see we've got the um, same earth terminal block, so the cable screen is continuous all the way through, but this, this time this is the last detector on the system. Now this one's got a beacon sounder connected to it, uh, and we screen that cable as well, just to make sure we're not picking up any electrical noise anywhere. The this, this system is hardened to go into industrial environments, so we want to make sure that if, you know, if we're in an electrically noisy environment, we're not picking up any noise on the system. So you've got these earthing blocks provided for that. The last device on the system, the last device on this cable run, has to be fitted with a terminator. Now these will be supplied, like this, in its green connector, and a little bag inside the control panel. So the last device has to have this terminator. You'll get two of these with each panel provided in the bag inside, so if you lose one you've got a spare. If you don't plug this onto the panel, then you won't get any communication when you connect everything back up and try and do a find with it. Okay, so again, two-wire connection, doesn't matter which way around these two go, so it's polarity independent. Here we're using one side of this as an SSR for a beacon, and one side as an SSR for the sounder. So independent control of the beacon and sounder. So this will allow us in the panel software to be able to mute that when it goes into alarm. Okay, so we've got our detectors wired up. We've got a beacon sounder connected. Um, Going to pop the lid back on now. So again, here's my cable connection for the cover. Pop that in. I'm going to screw the lid back on. Okay, so we've got the cover back on. Um, one thing we didn't mention at the start, uh, the product needs to be provided with power via a fuse spur. So it's normally fused at 3 amps. Um, so I'm going to pop the power back on now. What you'll see is the controller will go through a little startup routine. Uh, it'll power all the relays once to make sure everything works. and It'll check its internal systems and then it'll show you all of the software versions that are installed. So it's done its relay test and now it's running through its startup sequence, software checksums, software types, what's currently installed on the system. Now once it's done that, for 10 seconds it'll display this find message. If I press the button during that 10 second period, it'll now go off and it'll see what devices it can discover on that two-wire cable that we've installed. 
Now all of the devices are addressable, so they can all be pre-calibrated, uh, and they'll be pre-configured with what detector type they are, uh, what range, what gas type, uh, if, the, if the relays are activated on the devices or not, uh, and we'll show you in a separate video how to do all of that. Um, once it's done that, once it's found and discovered devices, it can interrogate that, the devices it's found and suck all the information off those detector heads. So it'll automatically configure all of the channels, all of the relay outputs. If it finds sensors, then it'll look at what that sensor type is and it'll automatically assign alarm levels uh, based on uh, UK EH40 levels. You can change those afterwards, so those, those actual exposure levels for alarms you get the option to be able to change. By default, they will be set up to be uh, UK legislation. Once it's done that, it'll then go through a warm-up period. That allows the sensors to stabilise. Uh, we set that at 15 minutes. Uh, it's 15 minutes primarily for the oxygen detectors on the system. They'll be the longest detector type to stabilise. And after that, after that 15 minute period, you'll have an operating detection system. Okay, so we've come out of warm-up. Uh, you can see the screen's gone green. We've got a green light ring to show that everything's happy and active. Power LED. And the display will now cycle through to display sequentially each one of the detected channels that it's installed. So I've got a, two digital inputs. That'll be stop and key switch. You can change the names on those. Uh, I've got the stop on the, on the panel here. And then I've got two LEL detectors, both reading. Uh, if I use the jog wheel, if I touch this to, to look at it physically, I now can rotate individually around each one of these inputs. The light wheel will change to a light blue colour to show that I'm doing that. And after a period of time of not touching this, it'll go back to green and start cycling around the system again. So a few things to note on this. The Easy Peel label on the front gives you a QR code that lets you jump to the website and see, see the full installer's guide. Um, same for the product manual, for the user manual, so we leave both of those on the front, you can download both of those, so those, those are well worth having a look at. Um, this now is an operating gas detection system, so gone green, we're cycling round, uh, so with a few simple two-wire connections, um, very simple install, operating system, this is the benefit of a two-wire intelligent gas detection system. As we said before, the detectors are pre-calibrated, they're pre-set up. The control panel sucks the information off those detector heads, automatically sets itself up. You can now connect wirelessly to this, um, just like you were setting up a router at home, to be able to change the cause and effect if you wanted to. Uh, but by default, your alarm levels will be set based on sensor type, uh, whether it's methane, whether it's CO, whether it's CO2. Uh, your relay internal to the panel will be, your first relay will be any alarm level 1. If you've got relays activated on the detectors themselves, they'll go off on alarm level 2. If you set beacon sounder outputs and it's detected those during uh, the find sequence, they will be active on alarm level 1. Um, you can elect to go in and mute channels if you want to do that. Uh, you can change all of the setup, everything that the panel is automatically done for itself. If you don't like how that's set up, then you can use the Wi-Fi uh, system to download, view that setup, edit it, upload it again. Uh, it also lets you then have a stored panel setup uh, so you know exactly how the unit was configured and commissioned on site. The only other thing we would recommend you to do after having followed that sequence that we've just gone through is maybe bump test the detectors. So just test to show that the cause and effect that you, you're after works. Um, you shouldn't have to recalibrate from a new system. We've already done that for you. Um, and there you go, you're off and going. Thank you very much for watching.